Shoes. First of all, disclaimer. I'm not a shoe expert. I highly recommend you go to a shoe store that'll run you on the treadmill. They'll figure out your gait, your run stride, the best shoe that works for you. Leave it up to the experts. They know what they're doing, I do not. But just for a beginner standpoint, I'll have to explain some things. In terms of what shoes you should be wearing throughout your training progress here, I like to break it down into three categories. Racing, an all around shoe, and an endurance shoe. Now your endurance shoe, don't get that confused for just long runs. That can be any kind of easy run or anything where you really want to have added protection. That's when you should use an endurance shoe. Some examples of an endurance shoe include Hoka's. You see I have my wife's shoe and here's this shoe. They're very dirty, I get that, but this shows you the level of thickness you have here. That's going to provide a lot of extra support for those long miles where you're really pounding the asphalt and you need to have that extra cushion. That's what these are going to help you do. In terms of ASIC shoes, you want to make sure you're getting the Nimbus or there's another one a little higher, I don't know the exact name for it, but that's also a really good endurance shoe. There's a plethora of endurance shoes out there. You gotta find the one that works for you, but just make sure they have really good padding, they work for you, and they give you the support you need for those longer runs. Hoka, Asics, Nike Air Pegasus, Brooks, Saucony, Ultra. Now your endurance shoes are something you really want to have that work for you because these are going to be the shoes you probably put the most miles in. You'll be spending the most time on your feet. So you better make sure they're comfortable. Now in terms of more of an all around shoe, you have some like these, a little more, they're not quite as bulky, not quite as heavy, not quite as supportive, but you can do a little more speed in them. The endurance shoes, the real thick shoes, are kind of hard to get a little speed in. If you have a tempo run or something, a little longer interval, you may not want to wear your racing shoes or you may not want to wear your really heavy supportive shoes. So something kind of in the middle like these or you know the Nike or Pegasus is a really good one. Some of those are something that's kind of a good thing to have on hand in case you want to you know, do those kind of runs with them. Next we're going to talk about racing shoes. Now, cross-country racing shoes is probably something you've never seen nor heard of before. Most cross-country runners wear what's called spikes. Essentially, it is a sock with spikes on the bottom. They're often, you know, feather-weighted, barely weigh anything. They feel honestly like a sock on your foot, and they help you to kind of get that extra traction on the cross-country course. As we know, it's often grass, dirt, clay those type of things. So anything to help you get some traction, especially if it's raining or it's wet in the mornings, that's going to be essential. Racing spikes do not have a lot of support in them. That's why it's key that throughout the week in your training, you're running in these just a little bit because if not, you're not going to be used to that type of shoe. You need to be able to strengthen your calf muscles and your feet muscles to be able to handle that lack of support. Now there's many different type of racing spikes or cross country spikes. You have the waffles. Now the cross country waffle, when you're ordering them and you see waffle on the name, that lets you know that it has a rubber bottom. There's no metal spikes. Waffles are excellent for your small town cross country runners who some of their cross country courses may have asphalt or they may have rocks. You certainly don't want to run across asphalt or any kind of concrete or hard surfaces with metal spikes or plastic bottoms because they may bust or you may not get any traction. So the waffle, in my opinion, is a little more of an all-around shoe, and if you're beginning into cross-country, I recommend getting a waffle, that way you can ease into it a little bit, and you have a more versatile shoe. Now with the waffle, it does weigh a little more because it's rubber. On the other hand, you have the kind of stereotype for the cross-country spike, and that's a plastic or carbon bottom with six spikes on them. Now, don't worry about, you know, does it come with spikes and all that kind of stuff. It will. It will come with spikes. You screw them in. It comes with a little utensil. I wish I had them here to show you, but I don't. But nonetheless, it's pretty self-explanatory. You screw them in and uh, you can replace them as well if they wear down. As a good general rule of thumb, 10% of your weekly mileage should be run in spikes. As we were talking about, you want to get your body and your feet and your legs used to the lack of support that comes with a cross country spike. When you run in spikes, it's gonna put you up on your toes a little more, which could alter your form just a little bit. So you wanna be used to running in this shoe. And you certainly don't want to just go out there cold turkey, wear a brand new pair of shoes the first race, 
you don't want you want to try and avoid that because that can cause blisters you know you might not like the shoe all kinds of problems that can occur if you just go out there and don't test the shoe out it's also good to test your racing shoes out before the race because you want to make sure your you know laces are where they want to be your spikes are you know screwed in tight you want to make sure they feel right make sure the socks you're going to wear work the last thing you want to do is get out there and not have a shoe that works for you some examples of some really good night, you know, racing spikes. Nike, Brooks, Saucony, Hoka even recently came out with a racing spike. They're not very hard to come by. It's just finding one that works for you. Again, finding different shoes for cross country is tough. You want to make sure you at least have two different pair of shoes, your racing and your endurance or training shoe. If you can't, you know, afford either type, I get it. Just find a shoe that works for you and you're comfortable in racing. If you're beginning, I don't recommend going out and buying a cross-country spike. Once you get into the sport a little more, you kind of become a little more experienced, you'll understand the need of a cross-country spike and it'll help you be a little faster because that extra weight can really weigh you down over the long run. Well, I hope that explains a little bit about cross-country spikes, training shoes, and, and things to kind of look out for. Again, hope this video helped you pick out a shoe.